All right, so, yeah, the books. So briefly I'll mention the books, only because everybody has their own books. I had a bunch of art books, and I found it interesting that as far as for color, I, I stayed with Matisse. Let's see if we can just quickly jump through these. Because time's going to blow by. The Family of Man is just a book I always had in my life, and it's all about humanity. It's a great photography book. I don't know if people all see it, but I've always loved it. Tremendous photos in it. This was my drawing book that I totally adore. If you want to learn about drawing, I think it has so many great examples of a million ways you can approach drawing. So it's Mandelowitz's Guide to Drawing. This was a specific edition that, uh, another plug here, Kenny at Chief Street Books, kids in the back, um, that he got for me, which was really great to track it down. So let's see. Okay, this is an Albert Durer book that I have, which I will show you a picture or a, a, a drawing I did, which it was kind of key in my whole life as an artist. Um, so that book's incredibly important to me, and I love Durer's work. He was like a 15, 1600s um, etcher and great painter, Northern Renaissance. Um, and this book, Dove, I told you I bicycle across the country. Wolf Kahn, the um, colorist, painter, great American artist, and a New England artist, and a New York artist, he um, talks about uh, going on a, um, Joe, what's the, uh, Vanda, Vandajar, how do you say it? Wanda Yard. Wanda Yard. Yeah. Basically, taking a year to find yourself or something. And that was the whole deal for me of trying to bicycle across country. And that came from this uh, book, Dub, which I read when I was a kid, about this guy, Lee, Lee, Lee Graham, or Robin Lee Graham. And he did a five year stint around, uh, I think, around the globe in, in his sailing a boat. And he kind of grew up from like the age, I don't know, maybe 16 to 21. And it, it really motivated me to, to go out and and run into things, basically, is what happened. But, and yeah, you know, you think you're gonna be enlightened, you go on this bike trip, and I, you know, that's what it is. You keep trying to find the answer, and you don't find it, but you keep trying other things. But I did, I did uh, get to San Francisco. So green eggs and ham. You know, how many, who doesn't love Dr. Seuss? And, and if you do, just don't say anything. So, I'm sure, but anyway, so, it's not that this is a specific Dr. Seuss book that you have to love. It's just that it represents Dr. Seuss. And actually, I just reread it recently, and it didn't take too long. But um, <laughs> the whole idea is, is Sam doesn't, um, let's see, how's it go? Sam doesn't want to eat, uh, this guy, uh, Sam wants him to eat green eggs and ham. He doesn't want to eat them on a box or on a rock or anything. And, and then in the end, he just, said, he just says, well, you just try it. And, and that's what Seuss was about, all these little subtle lessons. You know, so basically, your kids might eat broccoli if they, if they read that book enough. But probably not. You know, Rumi is, speaks for himself. Um, and Winnie the Pooh is about, you know, the, well, there's a, there's a lot of stories, but the, the one that sticks with me is the um, a, a Pooh getting his head on a honey jar when he and Piglet are trying to catch a heffalo. And he just has to have that extra honey in the middle left at night. And that's folly, if, if nothing else. Okay, and Evangeline by Longfellow, just uh, the best romantic um, love poem probably ever. So I love that one. Okay, so that could wrap up. Oh, no, the little prince. Um, um, yeah, I don't know philosophically what I can say about it, but the drawings on the cover, the whimsicalness of it, and the gentleness, I, I totally adore. So the story itself, I'm still working through my brain.